So Mastercam 2019 is now officially released and I thought what would be best to do with this new release is make some videos up covering the main new improvements in 2019. Now as most of you know when you do install your new Mastercam version it does come with a basically a what's new document. Uh, this document is fairly lengthy. This, this new one is 94 pages of content. So number one, there is a lot of new content in the new release. Uh, and two, there is a lot of uh, material here to review in order to find out what's, uh, what's new, what's improved, and what's changed. So with these uh, videos, um, probably be a handful of them, three, four, five, maybe even six. I want to cover the new features, not only what they are, but how you can use them, uh, how it improves your workflow versus 2018. Uh, I guess keep that in mind as well. I'm only going to be comparing 2019 to 2018. I know a lot of schools uh, and companies skipped over the 2018 update. They upgraded to the 2019, but then skipped 2018. So if you are coming from 2019 up into 29 or 2017 up into 2019, there will be some uh, additional changes which may not be covered in these videos. So in this first video for 2019, what's new in 2019, I'm going to cover just the main differences that are going to jump out at you right away. I'm not going to go super in-depth as to how they all work and how they all function, but at least show you what's there, give a brief description of what it's supposed to do, and then uh, compare those to the old interface. And then in future videos will go a little bit more in-depth, uh, especially with the bigger, more uh, popular improvements, uh, such as the new tool paths that are now available. So with that, I'm just going to minimize this interface here, and I've got basically 2019 and a 2018 Mastercam opened up on the screen at the same time. 2018 is on the top, and then the bottom half is a 2019. Just going to basically run through the tabs across each and just look at the, you know, the obvious differences, the new functions that are there, the new arrangements, uh, and then show quickly how some of these work. So I'll start on the Home tab. I'll work my way over to Toolpaths, and we'll look at all of the differences that are uh, in the new version. So starting on the home tab, 2018, this is our current layout. 2019 is on the bottom. And the first difference you're gonna see here is this set material button. So what we've got here is in our solids, we now have a way to add textures to them. Uh, we've only got some basic textures here to start, metal, plastic, and glass. Uh, but you can expect uh, this library to grow over the next several years. Uh, so basically when you've got your solid, I'll bring back my full screen uh, 2019 here. I've got my solid. If I select it and I turn on, I'm going to go with metal level 7 here. You can see I now get a texture pack for, my, uh, for that type of material. So it can be useful, in, uh, especially in your assemblies, if you want different components to look a little bit different uh, than other ones. You can do that with this uh, setting here. Now to turn this off, you'll have to go over to the view page. Let me just stretch this out a little bit uh, and turn off the material. So you can toggle the material state on or off. So that's the first main one on the Home tab. And beyond that, there is no more differences to find there. So we'll skip over to the Wireframe tab now. Again, everything is very similar. Uh, in 2019, though, we have added the Divide button right onto the actual toolbar. So to get to Divide previously, we would have to go into the Trim Break Extend, and then we could access our Divide from this side menu. Uh, I think Mashcam has realized a lot of us just use Divide as a quick uh, cleanup tool, so they've given us access to that right on the actual toolbar. Okay, looking over at the Surface tab now. Uh, everything is fairly similar. We do have a new function called Power Surface. Uh, again, we're going to need a separate video to go through that function, but there is a new Surface tool, and it's called Power Surface. Uh, the only other difference is that Fence has been pulled out of the drop-down menu here, so it used to be Net and Fence inside of this one function. It's now been extracted into its own button because we had extra room with this this new function power surface. So again, uh, look for a video on power surface coming soon. So looking at the solids tab, uh, very similar here, we do have a new function called hole. Uh, anyone who's worked with any sort of CAD software um, 
will probably really enjoy this new function, this whole function. So previously in MASHCAM, if you wanted to, say, do a counter bore on your solid, you would have to draw up not only the diameter of the counter bore, but the diameter of the through hole, and then extract them uh, separately to get the desired uh, hole type. So now, with 2019, we can just say hole, and we get this interface which allows us to make all sorts of different types of holes, counter bores, counter sinks, simple, etc. And we can just, uh, I'll add a quick position here, I'll add a random counter bore to my part, right there. So I think I just made one in the middle of space, let me just get rid of that guy. Okay, so make a counter bore there. You can see the preview on screen already. So I haven't had to make any geometry other than uh, obviously a, a point to snap to. We can adjust the counter bore size uh, and things will update live as well. So oh, and as well, when you it do accept that hole, it will become part of your solid. There is the hole on the solid tree and you can double click to get back into it and make uh, further edits if needed. So that's our new hole function on the solid tab. Again, continuing on here, we'll head over to the Model Prep tab now. I'm going, trying to go a little quick here so I can cover everything at the main points in this first video here, so I'm not going too in-depth with each function. On the Model Prep tab, you can see we've got some extra features here or functions on the layout. So different ways to align our parts here in the Model Prep tab. Drafting remains unchanged for 2019, as does Transform. Again, the functions you're seeing there's no changes although some of these do have improved functionalities which we'll get to again in future videos the machine tab again unchanged everything is the same here on the view tab we do have a new button and we have uh, what's called advanced display uh, we do have options down underneath of it as well to turn on what we want to be able to include in our advanced display as well as a menu that comes up that allows us to set colors. So what advanced display does is advanced display, I'll bring over my full screen 2019. Uh, by default this is what our toolpath would look like. I'm just roughing this part out, I threw it on here quickly. We've got some retracts, we've got some feed in or lead in motions and then some cutting motion. If we turn on dis advanced display, uh, depending on what part of the toolpath is actually occurring, you get a different color for that part of the toolpath. So these green motions here are my lead-in motions, the blue is still my cutting motions, uh, the red I believe is a, a helical motion, helical entry, red, this brownish red here is our, our lead-out, our transitions. So a different way to show just different parts of the toolpath with different colors. Carrying on over to where the biggest, uh, or I would probably say what most people would be interested in, and that's the changes on the toolpaths page. So I am in milling mode right now, and in mill we've got a couple new toolpaths for 2019. In the 2D, we've got this new model chamfer toolpath. For 3D, we have a new equal scallop toolpath. And under multi-axis, we have a new deburr toolpath. To kind of just summarize what these toolpaths are going to do to you, model chamfer basically, kind of like what it sounds, it's going to be doing chamfers on a solid model, a 2D chamfer. And what it can do here is uh, Mastercam can recognize where your chamfer tool can actually fit. So if you're chamfering something down inside of a pocket and your cutter is getting close to a wall, Mastercam can see that wall of the solid and avoid it. So that's where that toolpath is extremely useful. Again, I will be doing a specific video for model chamfer, going through how to use it, uh, um, workflows, and uh, how it can make your life easier. 3D, same thing, the Equal Scalp is a new 3D toolpath. It's similar to the hybrid toolpath, uh, but there is improvement to get improved tool motion. So it's not just a new new toolpath for the sake of a new toolpath. There is actual new um, algorithms being used to develop a better, more, I don't know if consistent is the right word, but less noisy 3D toolpath. 
And then the multi-axis, we've got a, again, a, a multi-axis deburr. This can be three axis, it can be four, it can be five, depending on what it is you're after. But again, we're going to need an entire video just to cover that function itself. One more difference on the toolpaths page in mill mode, we've got check holder. This, again, will take a whole video on its own, but check holder, basically, we can take an operation such as this guy here that I just did some roughing with. I've got a tool with a holder, and if you use the check holder, it will basically analyze the toolpath uh, against the actual model and look to see if the tool holder or the tool um, gouges or collides with the actual part. If it does detect uh, that there's an issue, it will update your tool projection. I think what I have right now is probably long enough where there's not going to be a problem with this part. Uh, but if there is a collision, MASHCAM will prompt you saying it's found something and it will update you with some relevant information that can uh, get rid of that collision for you. So there it is. Uh, you can see my tool projection has updated. So MASHCAM did detect a problem uh, back in that red area. And it's suggesting that I should stick my tool out that far with the given setup. One more thing to look at, and that would be toolpaths in the lathe department. So let me just get uh, 2019 into lathe mode. So new for 2019 in lathe, what was an add-in before is now incorporated directly into the software, and that's the prime turning toolpath. Uh, this will take an entire video itself as well. A lot of stuff to talk about in prime turning. The gist of it is it's supposed to be a better toolpath, um, higher metal removal rates, longer tool life, uh, etc. So we'll be covering that in a future video. And uh, I'm kind of unsure with this, this button here. It's the same function in 2019 from 2018. This fun is uh, as far as aligning the, the, the stock model you have to your lathe turning plane or creating a new one. Uh, there is an extra function in the new button here where you can select extra geometry. So I'm, I'm assuming that's why this has been renamed. But in essence, it is the same functionality between the two buttons. And the last major improvement in lathe, let me just see if I can bring this up here quickly, do a little extension. Since this is the last video, but basically... Sorry, I've got uh, the wrong tool pass selected there. So in Mastercam Lathe 2019, we now have support for 3D lathe tools. So big improvement there. It works both in backplot and in simulation. Uh, 3D lathe tools. So you're not just getting that flat pancake in your simulations anymore. You can actually see tools and they actually have relief out the backside as well. So big improvement there with the lathe uh, the lathe toolpath as well. So again, that's just a brief overview of the major new improvements that are going to jump out at you right away. Uh, be looking for some future videos about each of these uh, done up to explain the full functionality, the full use, and the full benefit.